I was asked by a viewer if I could put up a compilation video all about beam engines and here it is, a model beam engine special. As you can see by this clip, the timing is currently set very advanced and I can feel the pressure at each end of the stroke, but the engine still runs, it runs fine, but it will not run slowly. It sounds better, but it's not quite there yet. When I first put this engine back together, I immediately detected three things. One is the timing was out, the second one was a thump from the bottom end, and a click from the top. This is the forked end that goes onto the beam. This is not particularly that bad a fit, but there is a little bit of play, and there's quite a bit of side slop. So the click is the connecting rod moving from side to side on the beam. That's easily fixed. All I had to do was put some shim washers between the two internal surfaces of the fork against the beam. Well, nothing fell off it, and it's running better, it's sounding better. I'm just double-checking the fine-tuning of the timing. Progress has been made, at least it runs, which is more than it did last week. I've slowed down the video to see if I can find out where this clunk is coming from just by looking at the video, but no, it's not that simple. The engine is currently timed to admit steam just before top dead centre, which should cushion the piston and the other moving parts. If the timing is late, then you generally do get a knocking sound anyway, because everything has to go to the full extent of its travel before the steam is admitted to the other end of the piston. The engineering standard really is very good on this engine. The flywheel is very true, no shake or wobble, and there isn't much play in any of the parts. Here I'm checking where the admission of the steam takes place, and it's within tolerances, but at the moment it is not 100% where it should be. This engine is absolutely beautiful in every way I can think of. The engine is not even run in, but still runs quite slowly. As you can see by the black oil residue, the bearings are wearing in quite well. The flywheel was machined by someone else with a larger lathe, but everything else was done by Derek. Just look at the quality of this Watts parallel motion. Making Watts parallel motion to this quality really takes some doing. There are lots of parts to make. Time to speed up the engine now. The idea of speeding up and slowing the engine down gives a nice even running in period. It will take quite a while. Although the engine is not particularly stiff, everything's quite free. And the sound is wonderful. Whichever angle this engine is viewed at, the view is good. Here is the crankshaft with the connecting rod. And here's a close-up of the crankshaft with the connecting rod. Note the oil cup with the removable cap, threaded and knurled. And here in slow motion is the water pump. Once this engine is fully running, I would expect it to run down to about 10 revs per minute. At the moment it's still going quite fast. But each time we run it, it seems to get better. And once the oil runs clear from the bearings, we'll be getting somewhere. There really is not much more I can say about this engine that is not obvious. Engines like this do not come along very often. It is exceptional.
As the steam engine runs, it's evaporating water from the boiler, so it's vital that the water level is maintained. This plant has a hand pump to do this. A few strokes of the pump sends the water soaring back up the glass, with not much of a pressure drop really, and it soon recovers. The engine is now back together and running on compressed air on the bench. It has a new piston with a silicon o-ring, far better than the old one which had cast iron piston rings that were a rattle fit in the bore. So the compressed air or steam now moves the piston instead of blowing past. The main problem with this engine is that it is brutal. The cylinder bore is one and a half inches in diameter and the rest of the engine is far too small to cope with this power. When the engine was in its original state, blowing past the pistons with hardly any power at all, requiring about 50 to 60 psi to function, it was fairly quiet, well apart from the sound of all the air passing the piston. But now nothing passes the piston, and the piston moves from top to bottom in the cylinder very efficiently. In this video when you see the engine running slowly, it's only running on about 10 psi which is pretty good really, before it wouldn't even start below 50 or 60. When working on these old type steam engines, made many years ago, sometimes by people with a lot of skill, sometimes not, you have to have a very sympathetic approach to the renovation, otherwise you may as well just buy the castings and make a new one. This is about as far as I'd like to go with this engine, and it runs very well. And that's it for the beam engine special for the moment, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.